Good evening, everyone. It's 10 minutes after 8 p.m. and we are working here in Ventilate headquarters. And we want to share with you some good news. It seems that the global, let's call it isolation, really works. So yes, that's true. There are more and more people who are sick, who need uh, treatment in hospitals. But uh, it's not such explosion as in the worst scenarios. So stay at home really works. And we want to share with you also some hope. There's enormous acts of solidarity in the whole world and we are really cooperating uh, each other. And that's really, really fantastic. And we are here one of hundreds of groups who are trying to help uh, hundreds of entrepreneurs, small companies and also big companies who are joined, who are uh, together fighting uh, pandemic crisis. So I want to show you some progress that we've made in the last days. And so let's check what the guys who are working here are doing. And obviously uh, part of our team is working remotely. So let's, hi, Maciej. And the Maciej is our, one of our great engineers in electronics. Maciej is working right now. So let's see what Sian is doing. Hi, hi, hello. I'm working on some filtering system on oxygen con concentrator, so if you don't mind, I, I will just continue. Okay, give him work. And Mateusz? Mateusz? Uh, I'm making uh, new size for our ventilator. So that's a housing for ventilator device? It's still, that's what you see, it's really, really simple. And that's the aim of the whole, the goal of the whole project. It must be as simple as possible. So we keep safety. We don't want to harm any patient, but it must be as simple as possible to, to make it in even the most remote part of the world. And now Shimon, so our lead engineer in uh, medicine and programming will tell us what he's working on. So that's what you see here. Sorry, Shimon, I just show that here publicly. So that's uh, one of our prototypes right now. You see a lot of uh, hoses, uh, medical filters. Uh, this is valve actually, yes, it's really valve. Um, and that subtly we use it here, but normally you can use the car battery or this, this uh, AC socket. And and have oxygen here. So, hello, Simon. Hi, hello. Oh, yeah. Am I gonna hear someone? No, but everyone will hear you. Well, that would be worse. I mean, I would prefer the other option. <laughs> <laughs> so go on. Uh, go on, you mean to explain what I'm doing tonight? Yes, sure. Yes, so as you might have heard, we went to the hospital yesterday. Uh, I'll show you some live plots in a second. So we went, to, we went to a hospital yesterday, we had a chat with some doctors and we tried to play around with equipment they have on site to find some comparisons between how our stuff works and how their stuff works and also to cross-check if our oxygen measurement device works as we expected. So we had quite a few successes and uh, we still have some bits to be worked on and this is what I'm trying to nail down. So the main message from, from yesterday, and again a confirmation from what we understood from before, is that if you have your patient in, in the early stage, you want to you wanna give him some breathing help with non-invasive treatment, and then you want to find out when you should be switching to the invasive treatment. So our work now concentrates on building this apparatus. I mean, you saw the small box just a few seconds ago. Uh, into some kind of a, at the same time, breathing equipment and a diagnostic equipment. So what I'm working on right now is to, to have a faster response to, to, to a patient's breathing pattern. Uh, I can show you the basic way of work if I just speed up the machine a little bit. So you may hear some noise, but that's a problem for a microphone. But in reality, it's quite quite comfortable, right? Isn't it? Well, it may be not the most best thing for the mic we have because it just blows the air, uh, but that's the feature you have in all those machines. Actually, the professional ones are sometimes even more uh, loudly because we have this extra, extra piece of tube here for the measurement bridge. 
if you don't have this one, it gets even louder than ours. So, yeah, there's so no way around that. If I may interrupt you, mm -hmm. there's a, uh, you don't have a, we don't have a filters here. Yeah, we we've have them on the other side. We've moved the filters here, and uh, some of the doctors pointed out that we, well, we don't have a filter. We do filters here. And yeah, putting this filters here, what, what, what uh, This what is does? actually a super important thing. Uh, you know, it, it will be a bit technical. If you have a COVID uh, patient, uh, one of the problems you have with him is that he, he tends to have very heavy breathing. So he really inhales and exhales a lot. And your device should compensate somehow for that so that he doesn't have um, very high, uh, very low pressures in, in his breathing system so that he doesn't harm his, his chest, his lungs, his, his lungs yeah. anymore. So if you have your filters, um, if you have your filters um, right next to your patient, you will be having some pressure drop on that and the pressure, effective pressure in your patient's lungs will get lower. If you measure directly after the filter, well, the added cost is that you have to have filters on your measuring lines uh, and you have to have filters on the input and the output of the device. Uh, so it looks like you should be spending more filters. But in reality, what you earn is few extra centimeters of pressure uh, relief for the patient. Now, we compared that also with the professional devices. So we, we took our, well, you see those three tiny hoses here um, with some, some extra piece of plastic. If, if I'm interrupted, yep. uh, actually, the, we should put some filters here that, that we'll put uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we, and we've, we, we sure. found the way how to do that. Um, with the cheap, very, very cheap and yeah, there extremely are, there popular are, There are filters. small medical yes. filters that are used, um, especially in the bio laboratories. And um, actually, I think they are in all the hospitals in the world. Well, in several places in diagnostics, you would be using them as well, yes. That's good. That's a, that's a good news. And they are fairly easily accessible. I mean, we've checked prices in, in Poland, and they are cheap, and they, are, they, have, they have loads of them. And the China have millions of those filters. Yeah, I mean, you use them a lot, especially in science and in, in, in diagnostics. Mm -hmm. So good. that's not going to be an issue. But let me get back to that. So we took our measuring, measuring part. Uh, so, so these three horses, they, they go to electronics. We took it and we connected that to a professional equipment to compare on our plots, on, 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 on our mm, electronics, how does the other machine behave. Now, surprisingly, uh, they, you could feel some differences and it could be discussed as a question of preference, how you would prefer to be breathing. But the, the important part, if you could, is it possible for them to see the plot Absolutely. actually? Yeah, uh, I mean, now the machine is on the idle state. When I will be breathing through the mask, you will see something bigger. But this plot, it, it is a pressure at the patient mask. You want this, if you, if you, if you ventilate your patient in so-called CPAP mode, let's not get into too many details, the, the bottom line is that you want to have very little movement on that line when you are squeezing your lungs and then breathing out. If I turn on the machine from idle mode to the real mode, it will be slightly more loud, so I'll try to speak louder. You have it. At the switching time, you see there were some noises, but now we are having very little variance, and you want to get into a situation when it doesn't get too low. Getting a little bit too high is not so harmful, but getting too low is very, very harmful for your patient. So, so be less technical. So. Okay. This is this is the graph that our pa patient is breathing. Yes? Pressure the, on his breathing. Yeah. Yes. That, that, uh, that, and that's I a pressure in the yeah. millimeters of uh, in water. In centimeters of it's water. Centimeters yeah. of water. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I was leading to a fact that actually the variance we have, the movement we have here, uh, with and without the filter, uh, is better without the filter. And also, if you compare our device with the professional device, we don't. We actually get a little bit better than than the one we are comparing to. Uh, but there are still some bits and pieces we try to, to work out, um, especially the, the speed of response. Um, sometimes you might want to have it quicker. Again, this is a personal preference that you tune it to, to your patient, which you just have to allow to, to have it faster. Right, right. So, so we may say we have an uh, innovation? Well, I'm not really sure about definitions, but I think so, yeah. So, so good. So so it is designed especially for the COVID patients, but it also might be universal. Yes, yes. Of course, 
it, in order to talk about the universality of that, we would have to have some longer um, discussions and longer experiments. Uh, obviously, we'll get back to talking about that with doctors uh, at some point. Uh, once we'll have, you know, our our device fully nailed, fully, fully frozen in in terms of how it should look like, we're gonna write a little bit a little brief on on what we think about that and what the doctors we talked to mm, think about it. So, so, so we, we will see how it works. I mean, so we see if, if they consider that helpful for other diseases as well. So we have a question from one of the, the people who's watching us. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a question, uh, uh, if the pressure sensors are mounted on the mask. No, they are not mounted on well, the mask. Well, we've, we, we we've tested a approach like that with mounting on the mask. We've modified, I mean, this is not a mask you would be using for a long time, of course. Yeah, uh, that, that's, uh, that's only but for testing uh, we, We've tried how it works if you, m I you could actually see the a small hole here so we try to measure here I mean you don't have your sensor directly here you have your host that goes to, uh, to the sensor through the filter uh, but anyway it would measure the pressure exactly here the difference between this and that is very small and this thing is a stock part they have it in hospitals and this they would have to modify it uh, we are also working in the same time on um, finding the easy way to produce you might have seen, especially from Italy, they, they instead of having masks, they, they have this kind of piece of foil on the head. Yeah, like a, a huge helmet, like an astronaut. Yeah, it, it has many benefits, especially if you have facial hair, uh, because you could see on the plots that I, that I didn't shave for a long time because of air leaking through, through your hair. Uh, so if you, have those, if you have those big things, sorry for, for, for touching my mic, if you have those big things on your head, the, the, the foil thing on your head, the helmet, uh, it is easier to measure the pressure directly because you would, you could be having extra access port for the pressure measurement. We tried that; it works very good. It's even smoother than what we have in a present setup. Plus, on top of that, um, you have less air leak because you can have your nice tiny silicone going around your neck. It's very pleasant compared to what you have here. I mean. I'm not sick, I can always take it off because I'm just experimenting with that. I spent a few hours a day in those masks and it's already, you know, kind of painful here. Uh, so, so this helmet, uh, what we are working on in the other room a little bit, um, it doesn't look so spectacular because it's mostly silicon curing right now. Uh, but yeah, that, that would be a big help also for pressure measurement and for stability and for comfort of a patient. I should have started from the comfort, right? Yes, <laughs> comfort, comfort is extremely important here uh, because some of the patients will uh, wear those helmets for for many days. Well, it really depends. I mean, um, on the condition of the. It depends on the, the condition. Condition You know, doctors right. are still discovering new things about the disease. Um, you could find in different sources different uh, different timelines. You sh we should be prepared on on them wearing that for for even two weeks, um, but in the same time, it can also happen, uh, this is the diagnostic part of a device, that they just wear it for one or two hours and then they don't improve. And it means that you have to move to another type of a therapy. Again, this is not something which is fully set in stone. Some, some doctor societies are, all, are saying that this is probably gonna be the case, but this is still not frozen. We're gonna see what, what the, uh, there is another question. Yeah, that, we have another question. So. Uh, are we focusing on the uh, CPAP with oxygen? So it's a, that's a technical question, but... Yeah, uh, uh, should, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, okay, go, yeah. go ahead. So what you were seeing on the plot right now, yes, that was CPAP with oxygen. Could you, could you actually turn the camera so that you see the bottle? Uh -huh. Yeah, right. so we have here, I mean, those bottles are actually small, uh, but what we are working here, since we don't have our, uh, our oxygen separators uh, under control yet, we take the bo those bottles with, with the oxygen, we inject that um, to our system, we have a way of controlling the flow, and this gives us um, extra pressure of oxygen in the CPAP. Uh, it is true that we concentrate on that first. We have in a software also a possibility to switch to other modes. Um, depending on the naming you would be using, BPAP with some extra add-ons on, on top of that, um, but what you can see very often in the papers, they, the doctors are writing, the doctors in those countries where they have very many patients. Um, I'll get to mixing in a second, I see your question, I just finished the, the CPAP part. So what they are saying is that if somebody is to benefit from non-invasive, 
CPAP is already good enough. Uh, and they are actually sometimes afraid to give you more sophisticated non-invasives because you and you could end up hiding the real problems and you could be uh, intubating your patients too late. Now I see the question about mixing. This is going to be even more technical. Yeah, mixing is important, but if you do that early enough and we do that still before the filter, uh, mixing, meaning the mixture between the um, oxygen and air is already good. Um, if you would be asking more about what some people refer to as mixing, uh, which is really how you, how you make sure your values are constant, this might be too complicated to set that in a, in a movie. You could be asking questions. Um, we were measuring uh, that with our equipment and with the doctor's equipment. What we use here locally is that, I mean, it's not the fastest, but it gives us good accuracy compared to, to, to a medical uh, devices. Mm, but I think f that's a question that would call for for longer answer than just yeah, on so a live so movie. So make a technical film, a special yeah, product, um, I guess. Yeah, that that would be a good idea. Yeah, so I mean, so okay. So let let's sum up. Um, so with this device, we keep it very very cheap and very simple. That's Still, the aim. Yeah, we have a good results comparing to the professional uh, professional uh, equipment, mm -hmm. and we keep the price below 200 US dollars. That's still true. And we keep it safe. So we won't harm anyone. Eh? That's, that, that's the most important. Yeah, I mean, just for you to know, because I know that some people were curious about those most more sophisticated modes. We work on them still because the same patterns that go into diagnostic part, if you just add a little bit, I mean, a few lines of code on top of this diagnostic, you get those more sophisticated ventilators, uh, at least some subset of them. Uh, but the important thing is that the hardware stays the same. So the, the device looks the same. It's just the code that changes. If at some point we grow into understanding this good enough and we grow into understanding that doctors expect us to give them the other functionalities, we just tell them, yeah, there is this knob you have to turn and then you have it or we'll be pushing the updates of the software. But we try to concentrate on what they are saying is targeting the, the needs they have. Of course, if there are doctors out there on the other side of the camera who have a different opinion and who think that for non-invasive, they would be expecting something else, we would be very happy to hear that. But right now, yeah, CPAP with oxygen and diagnostics. Uh, the diagnostic interface is gonna come in a few days. Uh, we still have to polish it up so that it looks more similar to our, what, what medical staff is usually in, accustomed to. Ah, uh, there's another question from the same guy. Uh, yes. Uh, so you're working on oxygen concentrator. Uh, yes, we, we are working on it. Um, it's an early stage, but really, really very simple device. I mean, extremely simple and can be done in well, Sub-Saharan Africa without any problem. So I'm not sure what the sun they have, but <laughs> it uh, I mean, it again, it without getting into yes. too many details, the yes, device you itself... You need to have a factory. So that's the device it. itself is fairly simple. There are very few parts that go into it. Um, our main focus right now for most of our team is to, to really finalize the CPAP. What will come second and third will be those helmets and um, oxygen concentrators. Now, you, when you think about oxygen crisis, they have it in some countries right now, that they run out of the oxygen, which is pretty tragic because no matter what CPAP or what respi respirator ventilator you have, without oxygen you are, you are screwed. Um, I'll, I'll read the next question in a moment, okay? I, I know I'm slightly long and too technical, sorry. Um, so yeah, we'll get into those two extra topics. Um, we already started going there slightly, uh, but the most of the team is still considering the, the CPAP or the BPAP the main priority. Um, how far are we, we from prototype number three? I mean, prototype numbering is actually a touchy topic. <laughs> we have a third approach being worked on right now, and we had very many local internal revisions of it that. Iterations. Um, we're going to be publishing that as soon as we go through yet another round of tests on the um, how do you call the, the uh, dummies exactly on the, on the, on the dummies, dummies. dummies. Uh, because they we we are going going to be given an access to the dummy with very very sophisticated measurements inside 
we decided to be slow on releasing new revisions with instructions to the public because we don't want to risk the situation that somebody copies the design which is still not fully validated and uh, not, not fully safe not fully, fully safe, safe fully I, I i fully understand that some people would like it to progress quickly but you know i mean we better stay safe right all right so uh so andre if you are watching us still so that's the prototype number three and uh, if it would be given as a treatment for the patient yes that would work uh, we believe now it would yes, already yes, bring a relief yes, yes, yes because we got on our sensors exactly the same with the professional uh, equipment does so and we just want to make sure that the doctors will treat it as a tool that will be very quick in response and will give exact data uh, oh, there was another question from okay. the guys yeah the turbine yeah we went through uh, <laughs> countless prototypes. I actually use them uh, as, as, as uh, props on my desk to, to yeah, prevent so, so the so bottle from falling. Uh, really, really those are many. 3D printed. We yeah. went through several revisions. We went through several technologies. Um, this is actually, I mean, what we have right now, you probably, I mean, they probably hear it, right? I mean, I'm not sure how good your mic is. No, it's good enough. Uh, but yeah, we are very satisfied with our turbine. We know that it could be made better, for sure. But right now we are satisfied, and it's cheap and easy to manufacture. Yep. So you don't have no, you don't need to have a factory. You no, know, don't need to have uh, molding machines. You may have a very simple milling machine. Yeah, uh, you have a good 3D printer. You, you can make a it. The both options would work. I mean, I, it depends on, on, on how you want to make it, how how um, right. what materials and what tools you have access to. Um, uh, I'm not sure which revision was the there. I, I, I uh, really don't remember which revision was there. So the question, the question is whether we have a, the printed turbines from uh, GitHub. Yes, we, we do have. Uh, I don't remember which. I mean, we are every day having a slightly better one. I'm not sure which one you you have now on the GitHub loaded. Um, but well, um, it was already good. <laughs> the, the worst thing, it could be slightly noisy compared to the one we are having right now. Because the, from pretty early on, the um, air pressure and the air volume, so air flow, were already good. We were working on making it less and less noisy. Uh, there might be still some room for improvement, um, depending on which technology of production you use. Um, but now I'm recalling, yeah, the turbine that was there was good. Not the best, but good enough. And what's the what's most important here that yes you can you can go to the um, uh, services that sell uh, in bulk the medical equipment you can buy a turbine the medical one that you use in professional equipment um, but that's the first thing it's costful and I mean it costs more or less the same as a full device right uh, yes yes that's that's right you can buy a medical turbine that costs the same price that the ventilate product the whole product i mean the cost of parts Th that's true that's true and you know what we don't know how many yeah, sorry uh, guys sorry <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, do they still sorry. see us yeah yeah that that technology we are um uh -uh. yeah 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 you yeah, know okay, we have it, my, my the high tech is, is uh, above us we don't we don't know how to do technology yeah. <laughs> and uh, we don't we know how many pieces of them are available so now we are choosing the components, the standard industrial components, and we are checking availability. And so we are checking for, for the parts that are available in tens and hundreds of thousands of pieces in the world. So th that's good. That's good. If there will be need, you can produce it as oh fast as Wait, there's another question. Oh, we have another oh, yeah. question. Great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are th there is a guy asking if, um, if CNC, by CNC, I, I, I assume you mean cut it with the CNC mill. So, yeah, I would expect it to be long lasti longer lasting than a 3D printed. It really depends on your printer and on the material you use for cutting. So far, we've tried in with cutting from aluminum. Uh, it seems more promising than uh, 3D printed plastics we had. You but could also be thinking about final, cutting the final, from the plastic. The should, be, should be plastic, that should be plastic. Is CNC milled plastic. Yes, that's CNC probably going to be the final CNC one. Plastic and I mean, that would be the fastest to produce, actually. 
it should be actually faster to produce own mass than the 3D printed one. And actually designed as simple, you can make a very simple mold and you can do injection molding, you can yeah, that, do that's, like that's a 10,000 piece or 100,000 pieces. The way how the present the design of a turbine, a turbine is, is that you could actually produce it in all those ways. You could mill it uh, on a 3D milling CNC, you could print it, you could injection mold it, um, you could actually think of some other ways as well, depending on what workshop you have. But actually what's most accessible in, in small manufacturers, small factories, n is usually good enough for, for what's needed. Okay, so... Any more questions coming? No? no? I think it's quite long and quite I, I actually like the technical questions. Uh, uh, yeah, that's good. That's good you're asking. I prefer them than, than the non-technical so, part. So let, let's sum up. So we have a working prototype. Uh, if we would need to give it to the patient with the medical stuff, Set, uh, make a uh, proper setting, that would work. Yeah, but actually, one thing I, I would actually like to und undermine um, based on the reactions we were having. Guys, remember that those devices don't help you so much if you don't have medical people around so you. So they are not toys, absolutely. They are not toys. If you use it when you have a light case of COVID, you might risk not realizing that you really need to meet, meet the doctor because that's the reason why some, some of the doctors were unhappy about non-invasive treatments. They are, if you don't cover your diagnostic and observation of patient in the right way, you risk going in a situation that you hide the progression of a disease and then it's too late for other forms of treatment. Uh, so don't be hoping that you could just get away with having the thing and not having the um, training or somebody trained, I mean, somebody other than the patient trained on how the breathing system works. This is not the, a toy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not a toy. So yes, so the prototype number three works. Uh, I think we'll be releasing the files and, um, and the next progress in a couple of days. So we are working as quick as possible. Um, I want to have some days off. Like one, maybe in the month. <laughs> <laughs> now I think we should be releasing the files as soon as, as we as, as soon as we have a confirmation on a dummy. Then that should be and the time we'll when we start releasing yes. the, yeah, the files. And we'll have interface that is uh, that the doctor is familiar with, and that's that's quite important because you know, the doctors have a couple of seconds just to set up properly the device, and they go for to the next patient. Well, we have to m keep in mind that those nurses are going to be looking at that they'll be quite often in those hot spots, they will be not the anesthesia trained that's nurses. That's true. So that's we have to make it straightforward, we have to make it simple, uh, we have to make their life easier, they already have that's quite true. a tough life now. And the great advantage is that we can improve the device remotely by sending software, so it's a Tesla attitude, isn't it? Hmm. Sort of, yeah. Yes, yes, mm. with the Elon Musk. And you know what? Um, we've heard uh, also good news that the Tesla m and the General Motors are going to, pro and they are actually producing right now, uh, the professional ventilators from the part they are using in the automotive industry. So they, they took Tesla Model 3, they disassembled it and uh, well, uh, from the production line, and they took the, um, the components for the life-saving uh, pieces. So they've combined it with some medical equipment. They're making um, professional ventilators, 80,000, of them. Which is, which that's is a, a fair uh, number. That's a fair number. That should uh, make the United States safe and equipped with, with the professional ventilators. That's, that's, that's fantastic. So we are focusing on the countries that cannot afford for the professional ventilators and the ventilate device um, will be the last resort. Uh, the, the Mercedes also working on yeah, the Yeah, they, they released the thing. If you looked closely, I mean, I didn't follow the, the updates on the design. The, the early design was relying on um, uh, gases from the hospital system. So you need to have a You need to have already the, the gas lines equipped, in, right. in the system. Right, so, so uh, in the case of the Germany, uh, that's a good solution? In case of highly developed countries, that's, it, that, should, that's it should cover that's most that's of true. the situations. But you have to keep in mind that in quite a few places, you don't have those 
in the wall. I mean, in case of Poland, there are hospitals that you have this only in some department of a hospital. You don't have it everywhere. So relying on that might not be the best choice. Uh, it depends on your conditions, obviously. We don't rely on the air from the wall. When you have the air from the wall, actually, that's what I was breathing through yesterday in the night. Um, it's sort of unpleasant unless you have your humidifier added. Uh, it dries out your nostrils cr pretty quickly. So it has ups and downs. It has depends on the situation you are in. That's, that's really. That's, that's, that's true. Um, can we make a bet? So, so a bet? That, uh, yes, with with Elon Musk from Tesla. What do you think? Uh, Who will be first releasing the final product? Well, you know, he's actually unpredictable. Mm, he could be yes. saying, I release it tomorrow, and then tomorrow evening he has it. Yes, that, that's true, because well, <laughs> they are very... I'm not sure if I'm willing to race with him. He has fast cars and rockets. Yes, and rockets, and probably the most advanced company in the world. Especially in the way how he deals with... Uh, with but we, we have a one very important advantage. Uh, we are Polish. Well, yeah. Yes. So we want to give a cheap device. Uh, and if somebody will pay for that, we'll manufacture in thousands of pieces. And it's open source, it's not commercial product, and we want to share it with the world. So from Poland, with love. Keep the hope high. Okay. Cheers. <laughs>